And we're back with more of the Pope on film. Party! Yes! If you're like me, you're no doubt a big fan of this podcast, the Pope on film. I mean, who is it? Everyone's talking about it. Everyone who is you and I. But only the real fans, the true hardcore fans who have been with us since the beginning, only they would know the two big facts about the both of us, the two big, undeniable, really real, and in no way made up on the spot facts about you and I, America's yes. hottest podcasting couple, Bunny and Mei Lin. Uh, first and foremost, the first fact, which is about you, Bunny, is the fact that when you are not doing the podcast, you are, in fact, a celebrated marine biologist. So tell me, Bunny. What exactly does your job entail? How do you become a marine biologist in Colorado? Uh, first, you start out by hanging around the recruitment centers. Yeah. Uh, and then you have to figure out, you know, which one, you, which one, which branch of service somebody may have enlisted, enlisted, enlisted in. So, but generally, as they're walking out, they're kind of glad to tell you. So you just say, "Hey, did you enlist?" And you're like, "Yeah. What do you list in? The army? Eh, fuck it. All right. Somebody else. Hey, what do you enlist in? The Marines? Okay. I need to check your biology. Nice, nice. Okay." Okay, I can get behind that. I can I can actually get behind that. You can't just gallivant off into the checking the biology part there. Uh coffee may be involved first. Yeah. Okay. Uh after the coffee phase, there might be a kind of a dinner and a movie situation. But really, you don't want to make these too good good yeah because there are a lot of fucking marines and there's a lot of biology to check and this is science damn it yeah but sooner or later you will be able to check their biology hey mal bunny's a marine biologist you know what that is it's the study of people that are in the marines that is what it is it is you study uh-huh. the biology of Marines. There's Marine biologists. There's Navy biologists. Uh-huh. Air Force biologists. And then the new one. Space biologists. Yes. That's the new one. Trump came up with that. And the second fact <laughs> that you would know about me is that I'm a lover of history. I love it. But I'm also a storyteller. So what I like doing at this part of the podcast is I like getting a story from the history books. Maybe one that people don't know too well. And reword it via my own unique storytelling panache. And that's what this is. You know who had a lot of panache? Kevin Nash. Yeah. You know when he had the most panache? When he was smoking hash. When Kevin Nash smoked hash, he had panache. Yes, he did. Uh, So that's what this segment is. Another educationally uneducational installment of Steve's Historic Approximations. Dun, 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 dun. Or shap, as I like to call it, repeatedly, annoyingly, whether anyone wants me to or not. Now, personally, I like the name shap. And yes, I know I don't go by Steve anymore. But look, a good title is a good title. So the shap stays. May Lin's historical approximation, that's Malap. M- Milhap. That's too close to Milhouse. And Milhouse is and the milf. worst. Yeah. Milf half. That might be something. Anywho, this week on the old Shappity Shap Shap, we will be talking about the invention of a musical instrument that is a direct affront to God. I repeat, God did not want this musical instrument to be invented. Okay. Now, before we talk about the musical instrument in question, let's go back in time, Bunny. All the way back 
to episode 280, which okay. was quite a while ago, seeing as this episode is episode 439, which therefore, ipso facto, means that there has been exactly 159 episodes recorded between now and then. I mean, of course there are. Why would we lie? That would be really meta and weird. Yes. No one would get it or would care to. Anywho, episode 280, it was a good episode. We discussed how the TV show Wipeout legit killed a guy? Yes. And we talked about how it became like a like a franchise. So now there's like a British Wipeout, Wipeout India, all these different Wipeout shows all over the place. Uh, and there was also a segment that I saw on Spotify called Speed Racer is an Atheist. I don't know what that was. Okay. I don't remember what Speed Racer is an Atheist. I don't know what that is. I didn't bother listening to the bit. Sue me. <laughs> but apparently Speed Racer is an Atheist, so that's good to know. We also talked about a film. The wildly delayed. 2020 superhero horror movie, The New Mutants! Yes. Mal, recently, my 17-year-old, binge-watched all of the X-Men movies. I don't know why. Why did you do that? You just decided to? It just became like a bee in your bonnet? You've wanted to, but you just never have, so you just decided, I'm going to do it? Well, the next time you're feeling like that, just remember, I'm always here and I'm willing to listen. Yeah, so now Mal knows what happens when a toad gets struck by lightning. Yes. The same thing as everything else. Screenwriting. Yes. I wanted to, because, you know, with fucking WandaVision and the whole Evan Peters coming back as Ralph Boner thing, I wanted to understand what the fuck was going on i've never seen the sequels and i've never i've never seen any of them the sequels the prequels any of it so i yeah finally decided fuck it and i just watched all of them yeah and it's 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 funny because it's like oh you're gonna love x-men oh you're gonna love x2 okay you might like one or two other x-men movies but the rest are pretty crap like i'm sorry for x3 i'm sorry for x-men origins wolverine i'm sorry for the wolverine You'll probably like Logan. You'll probably like X-Men First Class. I'm sorry. Oh, and you'll love X-Men Days of Future Past. I'm sorry for X-Men uh, Apocalypse. I'm sorry for X-Men uh, Dark Phoenix again. And uh, I'm sorry for the New Mutants. But the New Mutants was pretty good. It, was it, it wasn't that bad. I liked it. But God didn't want it to exist. No. Well, and that... I'm glad you brought that up. Because I've been thinking... For, for New Mutants in particular, and also to a degree Morpheus and other pandemic movies, I think we should just let them get a do-over. You know? It, it's funny you should mention uh, pandemic movies because I recently sent a uh, tweet to Joey Lawrence's brother begging him I, I, I tweeted to him, please, Andrew Lawrence, please tell me you are working on a money plane, too. Because that was the best part of the freaking lockdown. <laughs> was Darius Emanuel Grouch III, a.k.a. The Rumble. Yeah. And it's like, out of all the movies that came out during the pandemic, even the, the New Mutants, freaking Tenet. God, Money Plane was so much fun. I'll watch Money Plane a million times before I watch freaking Tenet again. <laughs> like, all of the movies that did come out during, like, the, the height of the coronavirus should all get a do-over, except for Money Plane. Because The Edge and Frasier is exactly what it... The Edge, Frasier, and Blossom's brother is exactly what America needed in our time of crisis. Yeah. But we were, but uh, in episode 280, we cover the New Mutants, a film whose behind-the-scenes drama was way more entertaining than the actual movie itself. We are releasing this X-Men horror movie in this April 
2018. No way! 2019. Yeah. That'll, uh, no, we're going to release it in February 2019. No way! How about August 2019? Yeah, that's the ticket. August 2019. No way! Now Disney owns our entire company, and they don't want to release the film at all, so it's been pulled indefinitely. So I guess there'll be no new Mutants movie at all. No way! Disney has decided to release the movie finally. It will be released absolutely, positively, 100%. There are some fans out there that have been waiting for this movie. And we are finally going to release it for you. Yes, it will be in theaters. 100% in April 2020. I, well, unless there's some sort of act of God that stops it from being released in April of 2020. But that will never happen. Yeah. So then it, it it got pushed back to summer 2020. Then it got then it was finally released, whether they wanted to or not, in August of 2020 with a whimper. Now, am I saying that the coronavirus pandemic happened because God didn't want the movie The New Mutants to be released? No, but I'm also not not saying that either. Now that brings us what? Mal's betting two bucks on it because that's all they have. That's more money than I have. Uh, that brings us to our shop proper. <coughs> Bunny. Yes. The tuba. Tuba. Was invented in 1835 by two men, Wilhelm Frederick Weiprecht and Johann Moritz. The piano was invented in 1655 by a man named Bartolomeo Cristofori. And side note, it's shocking that no one knows his name. He invented the freaking piano. Yeah. Everyone has heard of piano. Everyone. And yet no one knows the name <coughs> Cristofori, Bartolomeo Cristofori. He invented the Piano, for Pete's sake. Oddly, his name is my name, too. That's so weird. The accordion was invented back in 1822 by a German named Christian Friedrich Ludwig Buschmann. And it's like, gee whiz, Chris, save some names for the rest of us. <laughs> what are you, my dead grandmother? Fuck language well we aren't talking about any of those people no we will be talking about a musical instrument known as the saxophone okay most famously played by america's greatest saxophone player lisa simpson and an instrument that wasn't really well known until it gained worldwide prominence after the release of the song Yakety Sax, the theme to the Pulitzer Prize winning television series, The Benny Hill Show. Bunny. Yes. Get this, okay? Peep this. The inventor of the saxophone, his name was Adolphe Sax. Okay. And when you know that, that's when you come to realize, oh my goodness, the fact, the saxophone, what a crappy name for a musical instrument if the inventor's name was sax. Yes. Like, that's, that's, that's a real pile of crap right there. Oh, so Adolfo Sax invented the saxophone. Did Rudolfo Tube invent the tuba? <laughs> Did Albert Cronenberg invent the accordion? Cord no, did Albert Cordenberg. So, accord, accord. Yeah. Did he invent the accordion? I know Frederick Kaiser von Pian didn't invent the piano. The piano was invented by Bartolomeo Cristofori, and that should be a household name. Yes. Okay. I digress. Adolphe Sax invented the saxophone, which is a typically brass-made single reed 
musical instrument, a woodwind instrument, despite the fact that it is primarily made in brass. Adolphe sax was a didn't celebrated... We, didn't we see them being made in a mystery science theater short? Didn't we see them being made with Mr. B Natural? I remember them being made, I think, in one of the aside shorts in like a 70s or 80s Sesame Street. Possibly. Because while they were making it, like they were doing sounds of a saxophone. (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, I also think they were made in uh, Mr. B Natural. Mr. B Natural, trans icon, Mr. B Natural. Okay, really? Because there was no gender to Mr. B Natural. No. Because he was Mr. But yeah, Mr. B Natural is a trans mystery science theater short, and no one can tell me otherwise. Fight me. <laughs> Adolphe Sax was a celebrated instrument maker in Belgium in the 1800s. He invented the saxophone in early 1840s, and a patent was issued on June 28, 1846. So June 28 is the saxophone's birthday, and you didn't get it anything. <laughs> For shame. If anything, you should give gifts to saxophonists on June 28. I'm gonna kill a, I'm gonna kill a, a a goat in the name of Lisa Simpson on June 28th. Um, no, not Lisa Simpson, the jazz player who died. Oh man, what was his name? What was his name? Bleeding Gums Murphy. Oh, I'm so proud of that. <laughs> Adolphe Sax invented the saxophone. He also invented the saxo tromba, the sax horn. And the sax tuba, those did not take high school bands by storm, however. No. And that's the story of the saxophone. Uh, Except for one small fact, which is the saxophone is an affront to God! Okay. The saxophone is evil, the saxophone is immoral, and it spits in the face of God herself! Yes, my friends, I go to church now. I go to church every Sunday. I pray, and I know two things that God hates. The film The New Mutants and the freaking saxophone. (laughs) So let me tell you why. Uh, Let me get my phone. Because instead of uh, rewording it via my own unique storytelling panache, I'm just going to read it because no one could word it as good and as perfectly as Wikipedia does it under Adolphe Sax. Okay? This is... It's great. It is... It's wonderful. Um, and when I finish reading this, it will become obvious that God hates the saxophone. Okay. Adolphe Sax faced many brushes with death. As a child, he once fell from a height of three floors, hit his head on a stone, and was believed dead. He basically got Eric Clapton. He got Eric Clapton. He fell three stories. Okay. Hit his head on a rock and was believed dead. What are you, Barbara's brother in the beginning of Night of the Living Dead? (laughs) At the age of three, he drank a bowl full of acidic water, mistaking it for milk. Okay. How do you do this? Well, okay, okay. To his defense... He has already suffered a major head trauma. He did. <laughs> I, what if what if he invented the saxophone but he thought it was a phone? Yeah. 
Hey, I invented the first ever phone. Look, I'll call you. That means come and see me later, baby. <laughs> it's like, oh, Adolphe. That's not a phone. But good job trying. Pat, 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 pat. <laughs> So he drank a bowl full of acidic water, mistaking it for milk, and later he swallowed a pin. A pin? A pin. P I N. A pin. Like a like a thumbtack. He just swallowed a thumbtack. Okay. He received serious burns from a gunpowder explosion. Well, again, the the massive head trauma. I'm picturing like People being around him all the time, constantly trying to stop him from doing these things. And these, these are just the few that just got away, you know? The only thing, in my mind, I just came up with this. In my mind, all of these injuries came to him because he was trying to catch and eat a roadrunner. <laughs> And it's like, hey, I'm going to jump off of this building. Thankfully, I've got my Acme parachute. Oh, crap! Um, he once fell onto a hot cast iron frying pan, burning his side. Oh. The only way that this story makes sense, I'm not even close to being done. I'm like halfway done. The only way this makes sense is if Adolphe Sachs has a brother named Gallant. <laughs> and he's Goofus Adolphe Sachs. And there's a Gallant Adolphe Sachs out there. He has, a, he has an other. He has a dark twin like in Jordan Peele's Us. Several times he avoided accidental poisoning and asphyxiation from sleeping in a room where varnished furniture was drying. What the heck? He's just getting high sleeping in a in a room full of like paint and fumes. <laughs> Adolphe, wake up! It's time to, time to go to church. Wait, we can't stop here. This is bat country. <laughs> Another time, young Sax was struck on the head by a cobblestone and fell into a river, almost dying. What okay. is he, Mr. Bean? <laughs> what the heck? I can totally see the Rowan Atkinson Adolphe Sax movie. Holy crap, I can see that entire film. Rowan Atkinson is Adolphe Sachs. <laughs> His mother once said that, quote, he is a child condemned to misfortune. He won't live. His neighbors called him Little Sachs, the ghost boy. Okay. You can only read this as an act of God. God didn't want the saxophone invented, and he did his best <laughs> to stop Adolphe Sax from inventing the saxophone. I'm starting to think that when all those Puritan uh, Christians in like the 1930s and 40s oh that jazz music is immoral it's the devil's music maybe they were right <laughs> maybe it is the devil's music if anything i'm thinking that the devil's just like oh, i'm gonna make sure he survives it creates jazz <laughs> that's how i read this the saxophone flies against the face of god that's why I'm starting a group. It's called Mothers Against Saxophones. Our, our acronym is MAX because I'm making the X capitalized and not the M. Then okay. We M. No, MAX. We are MAX. MAX Against Sax. <laughs> Mothers Against Saxophones. MAX Against Sax. 
It, this is this is my uh, we need to attack the whack. Yes. The whack attack. Where is Bucky and what has he had? <laughs> oh, such a great line. So that is it for Shap this week. Uh, great Shap about music and uh, stay away from saxophones. Stay away from saxophones. That's all I'm saying. Stay and and the saxophones. new mutants. And the new mutants. Stay away from the new mutants and saxophones. Uh, join us next week. Oh, I've got a great one next week. We're going to be talking about diaries and writing and a guy named Robert. It's going to be great. That's next time. So join us next time for more educationally uneducational fun with Steve's Historic Approximation! Dun, dun, dun! And cut on that.